Good morning, good day. Uh, welcome to um, our conversation today related to emerging technology. I have two amazing uh, guests here today. I'm Kimberly Penn, Chief Strategist for Women and Drones, and I'm going to introduce um, Liz Stalford of Sweet Aereo and Kimberly Hayes, another Kim, so we know we're in, uh, also additional great company with Volcom Technologies. So today we're gonna to talk about emerging technology, got a few questions and would love to know your thoughts about the following. So as we get started, tell us what does it take for you to get to the seats where you are today? And what's your journey been? If you can uh, give us a little preview of that and, and some insight, we would appreciate it. Okay, um, I've had, uh, I started out as a corporate pilot and um, be then became an Alaska Bush pilot flying a de Havilland Beaver on straight floats. And that was a, quite an interesting experience off the grid. And I got involved in the Air Force Auxiliary Program, uh, supporting the Green Flag um, Program, which is uh, live war games, um, getting our men and women ready to send overseas and uh, providing close air support with surrogate predator. So that was my first introduction to uh, multispectral cameras, sensor operations from a live, from a real airplane. And then um, I went on to manage the FAA t designated test site in Oregon. And that was wonderful because I became immersed in the commercial um, aspect of flight test for drones and had the opportunity to work with a number of companies. And then I went back into the man manned aviation world and um, and I um, managed a company. I was the general manager and chief pilot for a company that had a MX-10 sensor on a tur Turbo 206 and did fire mapping. So, so it's and, like search and rescue heading into that. Yes, place. and um, and then with the um, with the unmanned also um, did one of the first um, three proof of concepts for the DOI. Department of Interior um, for firefighting and showing how it can provide actionable data to the incident commanders with fire mapping on what the fire is doing rather than having it be um, six hours old. You know, the information that's live streamed down to the incident commander so he knows exactly what's happening to allocate resources. Um, and then um, I got into the regulatory front doing type certification, part 135 for all, all for unmanned and part 145 repair station and now i work for swoop arrow uh doing the type certification and a little bit of production cert as well and i love it excellent very good extensive background very uh, work, working with military which we certainly appreciate you supporting in our men and women getting them combat ready and all thank the way you. over to compliance and regulatory so yeah thank good. you thank you thank you and Kimberly? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I ca I'm following these amazing rap sheets that's very humbling <laughs> when I'm sitting up here, but mine's kind of a bootstrap and uh, brass tacks path. I um, went through, uh, worked, my first career was at a company which made microfiche, and any of you guys there know what that is, you'll get it. And when I was uh, right after high school, and I remember hearing about computers in the late 80s, and I was like, you know, intrigued. And none of my parents went to college, so it was kind of a, that's my drive is because I asked them, I said, hey, do you, um, you know, hear about these computers? What are you going to do? And they're like, oh, we're always going to need to have a hard copy of something. And, you know, I, you see the handwriting on the wall. So I was out of there and went to undergrad, got a degree in science with minors in math and computers. And, you know, through the courses of some of the other speakers, the impact of one person, my science teacher was a, a great, um, she made it come alive and she made it um, that my first passion, but um, I wish the school would have been a little more geared towards encouraging women to be in science and math or engineering. I didn't even hear the word mechanical engineering, but I ended up with a degree in science, mathematics, and computer information systems. So it takes linear algebra because they like it, or calculus, or trivia, or physics, right? And so, um, you were, and after that, it was like I went to work for a chem company, a chemical treatment company that uh, our primary client was Chevron, I mean, excuse me, was Boeing. So uh, six months into it, got sent to California in the 90s, um, was there for uh, till 2015. Uh, and then we ended up going to California, Texas, to Boeing and uh, because of 787 transfer over to the Kelly Air Force Base and um, got into the oil and gas industry. 
and uh, I worked both those 18, 25 years at two companies. And it was corporate, I was doing business development work, looking at the future always, but then you're always shuffling it back to a big corporation. And a lot of times it churns through the system and very few things hit the market. So COVID came around and I thought, well, there's a lot going on in the uh, robotic space and offshore drone, you know, in the oil and gas sector. So if not me, who? So I jumped off the corporate cliff uh, in six months. I met, had three patents. One of them is a um, explosive environment robot um, that we're in the process of getting zone zero certification. And uh, I've got another robot coming online next week. So. It's a lot of fun. So I'm kind of the bootstrap way. I never got the aerospace, but I'm more on the robot, you know, and I got here because I saw uh, Sharon at the emerging um, energy drone summit and I saw her bag saying drone, you know, women and drones. And it's like, well, why not women and robots, you know, and like fly cross swim. Let's broaden that emerging to, to broader scope. Very good. Well, first, I want to do a shout out to teachers. They are always pivotal <laughs> in most of our journey. We can remember uh, some really incredible, impactful uh, teacher or professor. Yep. Um, incredible journey as well, um, the corporate America side. And now you're in the entrepreneur and bootstrap. So if you all are familiar with bootstrap, that's typically a, a, a 90 day uh, yeah. kick it off and go. And, and what is it that you're able to do? So congratulations. We know that's a tough road, but you've got the grit and the tenacity. I've spent some time with you, so I'm very excited about that. And thank you for, again, supporting as, as well, our men and women, Kelly and so forth, in terms of those spaces. Yep. Very good. Okay. And when we think about uh, the uh, impact that you all have had and your temperature checking, of uh, the industry, whether it's aviation, space, robotics, things to that capacity. What emerging technology um, are you all excited about? And you know, what impact do you think that women will have? Um, as we look around, we're seeing more women. I think we can all say that more women are necessary when we think about diversity and innovation. But what emerging technologies are you all excited about right now? If you can each give me one, that'd be great. Oh, emerging technology, mm -hmm. boy. Um... I I would have to say detect and avoid for safety. Okay. Longer battery life to reach more and more of the underserved communities okay. uh, around the globe. I think that's really important is increasing that battery life. Okay. Yeah. We've been, we've heard that from some of our other speakers over the course of the summit, um, the innovation, and if we can do something that can um, democratize the access for others and, and batteries and electricity and those pieces can be really impactful. Um, to, to allow more folks to enter in, especially women and uh, globally. Good. Yeah. For me, uh, I like the uh, the unmanned or unpersoned uh, environment where it's complete. Like the oil and gas is really moving towards offshore platforms, completely, completely autonomous, FPSOs, completely autonomous. And I think there's like a cognitive conversion that we need to do where, you know, there's companies that are making drones, companies that are making robots, companies that are actually churning that data. Um, so they, there's tons of data and that data transition versus the acquisition apparatus. But I think that we need to have a better uh, open exchange of, of how we get that data into the, the system. And there's like, I work with a company, I'm an advisor to Hover, and they, they saved one large owner operator, like $8.3 million in the past with converged 37 different facilities, 800 assets, and, and, and have saved countless hours, by, and it's all drone visual. And so the impact of how we take whatever flying tool, whatever pilots out there doing it, how do we ingest that and actually make it useful? Because we don't really, we do want the images, we just want the data. Is this asset, you know? going to survive or, sure. or not. So I think there's going to be a collective, I, you know, like the human where you have smell, you have sight, you have hearing, have one robot either, you know, or one uh, digital ecosystem that okay. can actually take all those factors in like humans do. We try to replicate it, but sure. there's a lot there. That sounds really exciting. I, I think of AI, the yep. impact, machine learning, yep. and the ability to uh, really scale that. And I guess women in drones, you mentioned earlier, um, not just drones, but robotics. You know, we look at the uncrewed or the unmanned piece, not only in terms of what's aerial, uh, what's on the ground, and, and even venturing more into, um, you know, a maritime or the water aspect of, of um, 
robotics, for example. So. If you're thinking of emerging, I mean, that's like near future, right? Mm -hmm. One thing that we really need to do, and I hope that we do faster than not, is okay. I've been on ASME for years and, you know, we're still designing pressure vessels the way we've done them before. Okay. And so we need to be designing ecosystems. You don't need steps if you're going to have a drone go up or a robot go up. We're still in that mindset where we're designing for our current condition and then augmenting the technology to kind of navigate it. It would sure. be nice if we kind of backed that up. Sure. And... Could. I think if we look at uh, VR and some yeah. aspects of augmented reality, we may be able to have an opportunity to do more of that testing, which can be pretty expensive, mm -hmm. uh, especially for startups, and then you know scale that open source in terms of the sharing of data and, and the ability to really uh, move emerging technology to mainstream as mm -hmm. well. Very good. It's a lot on the horizon. It's just not going fast enough. That's one of the... Yes, that's startup life too, right? We want to we want to move fast, and, and big, bigger corporations they often move at a very deliberate pace, and so the meeting of the minds can be a, a challenge in some yeah. form or fashion. Well, that takes me over to as we're looking at emerging technology and and who's in the uh, space, particularly in, in aviation and, and everything that supports that. Um, how do we take into account um, like a diversity, right? So we know that. Um, diversity of thought brings about a level of innovation. Um, it, it pays for itself with organizations. Um, you know, what are your thoughts as it relates to uh, diversity and the impact that that has? We're all women, right? And we're a diverse group here based upon our own backgrounds. What are some of your thoughts about the impact diversity has uh, in startups as well as in, in corporate America and, and some of your other experiences? Yeah, I think of two analogies, right? One is like how composites are made, right? They're interwoven fabrics in opposing directions, and that creates a tremendous amount of strength, right? Mm -hmm. So the more, and the other analogy is even in the, I don't know if you know the one about the uh, elephant and the blind men, right? Um, it, you know, they're, an elephant comes up, they've never seen it before. They go up, one's at the trunk, says, oh, I know what an elephant looks like. You know, it's a big snake. And okay. the other one gets at the foot. And the, no, an elephant is a tree, and the one's on the side. And, you know, it's a wall. And the one at the tail is like, no, it's a fuzzy mouse, you know? you. And then, like, you know, you kind of, and I think the one thing that women offer is that dual hemisphere diversity of collective uh, inputs you know, that, that we need all of that. And women are very good at nurturing that uh, communication and, you know, kind of getting things to move down the field a little bit more and uh, supporting others, and we need to do more of that. But um, those kind of two analogies, I always think of composites and the strength that you get, and yeah, but it takes a lot to get there. It's not just a one component. Very good. Yeah, not, definitely not one-dimensional. Very, very good. What are your thoughts, please? I think um, I think women are um, we we go about solving a problem completely differently. Mm -hmm. Our our brain works differently, um, and I think that we have um, some innovative thought um, about approaching things that that the traditional male dominated professions wouldn't wouldn't have thought of. Um, we're less willing to accept what has always been. We're more willing to challenge. Sure. And, you know, we're more willing to just find a solution rather than just accept, well, this is the way we've always done it. So, sure. and, I, and I think we're very safety minded. Mm -hmm. I think mitigating risk is huge. I think that's uh, very um, at, at the forefront of women's minds, too, as well. To see that this integration into the national airspace is done safely sure. and that um, we're not just figuring out how to integrate ourselves into the national airspace, but how, how are we educating the pilots? you know, the man pilots, so that we all work together safely. Um, and women just approach things differently, as, as well as cultural diversity, right? Yes. Around the globe, there are there are issues that are um, faced in, in Africa, for example, that I don't have a good perspective on, but, but pe you know, a woman over there has a really good perspective and can provide a, a lot of information on how to approach this differently. So I think it, it's cultural diversity and, and as well as having more women Sure. involved in working with, um, you know, working to solve the problems. I think SWOOP has, you know, been nothing but supportive of um, appreciating the different perspectives and right. appreciating the different um, approaches to solving problems. And Very good. I love that. And I, it is 
when you approach diversity as an organization, whether it's again the startup sector or small, all the way to enterprise level, mm -hmm. it, the bottom line is you have uh, access to more talent, right? And then that in itself brings about all the things that we've talked about with yeah. innovation, um, you know, better ways to make uh, decisions and, and um, just again, the capitalization of, of diversity of thought, right? And in terms of like your example related to what's going on in another part of the, the globe, uh, continent of Africa, for example, women in drones, we're ever growing as we have footprints yes. in you know, 22 countries, right? And that helps us have a better understanding. Um, as we know, FAA, for example, is just for the United States, right? right? Uh, with cooperative relationships and collaborative relationships with their uh, counterparts in other nations. But we really have to have an understanding and the cultural competency to, to understand what's really taking place in other parts of the country and the world. Yeah. Very absolutely. Good. Very good. Well, you all have been absolutely dynamic. Thank you for sharing uh, parts of your journey where you are. Uh, we're hoping that we can uh, continue to have this type of conversation. Um, and that you've inspired others to think about not only emerging technology, but certainly uh, diversity and, and, and what that brings about to any organization. Can I add one more? Absolutely. Okay. No, it's kind of funny because I didn't really say at the beginning, and um, it's my first time coming into Women in Drones, and it was lovely to kind of, it, it's more of a commercial and more of an industrial uh, kind of use case where I didn't explain the industry I'm in, which is called non-destructive testing. It's an industry that I think you're all going to be thankful for when you go and get mm -hmm. on the plane. We actually, you know, do the inspection of landing gears and mag particle, liquid penetrant, ultrasound. I've been in that space for 25 years, and the nice thing about where we're injecting these automation points is it's about the datum. It's not about getting a UT measurement at that point. It's about checking the, you know, integrity of that landing gear. And so digital twinning and data analytics and how we get all that is really something that I think that women are going to really see outside of the convention brute and brawn of how we've always done it in the past. Not everybody wants to go crawl in a trench and have an x-ray sure. panel and doing something, but if we can actually send a robot out there right. to do the acquisition, churn that in. So I think it's it's I think it's lovely that industries need to probably try to share more yes. because I've been humbled by listening to everybody in here and I'm in all of the oil and gas you know, robotics and drone conversations, and there's so much depth and expertise and lessons that you guys have already passed through that we're still trying to figure out. So I engage and encourage, you know, cross industry collaborations. That's how we're all gonna get there, not only diversity of gender, but diversity of industries and understanding the outcome. Sorry, that was no, that's, that's <laughs> added in. It's, it is important to talk about brawn versus brain, mm -hmm. right? And if we, uh, measure uh, success by uh, like physical strength or, and, and, or say the power equates to that. Um, things that uh, there's some obvious differences at times between men and women in that space. And when we talk about brain power and, and pieces like that, that's certainly a great equalizer, if not even some advantages, as we have talked about troubleshooting and some of the other skill sets that women often bring uh, to the table. So thinking yeah, about absolutely. Turing also too, like when they, the first study in the 50s on artificial intelligence is not new, but thinking back, you know, the, the a target objective was, can I ask a question to decide whether or not it's a person or a robot? Right. And I hope we get to that point where, is it a woman or a man that's gonna be irrelevant right. to that point, but the answer is what everybody's focusing on. Right. Right. Very good, excellent, excellent. We'll have to pick up this conversation some more. Yeah, Maybe we'll plan wonderful. another uh, that would you know, be conversation and, and see where that goes from there as well. It's fun. That would okay. be great. Very good. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Very good. Thanks. Thank you.